gonna point the thermal at it while I weld it in place just to see what that looks like. Before we get too carried away here, let's see. Oh, we got plenty of standing pressure. Gonna hook up to our recovery machine. If you're asking what happened to its other eyeball, uh, it got into it with a vacuum pump. You put a dab of solder over it to make it stop leaking. We'll hook onto our recovery tank. We'll open it back up. Let the gas go into it. So right here is our recovery jug. I've not yet turned on the recovery machine. I was just curious what it's gonna look like beforehand. So now we're going to turn on the machine. We'll start pumping refrigerant into that. So that thing is getting pretty dang hot. What I like to do is take a bucket of ice water and set this down in the ice water. Take this. And we're going to put her down inside the ice water. It's going to help that gas condense down into a liquid because we're giving a way to get rid of its heat more easily. And also since it's so hot out, put that in our ice water. Our entire jug is cooling down now. It's starting to come down better. Now this bucket is a really nice bucket. Five gallons is there, it's six gallons up to underneath this ring. This will actually fit my larger recovery tanks and I can get a little bit of ice and water around it. A local liquor store gave it to me when I was working on an air conditioner and had to recover their unit. So sometimes we get some perks with this job. Also, I wouldn't be out here today if I didn't have this umbrella. It is hot. 89 degrees, real feel, 105 degrees. I believe it. Oh yay, and it's only gonna get hotter. Heat advisory. Guys, stay safe out there if you're in this with me. Stay hydrated. All right, we're about to collapse the lines here shut it off we're gonna break our vacuum with some nitrogen here we got condensation on the compressor from where we lowered the pressure so much making the refrigerant boil this got cold as that was trying to get hot this became our evaporator that became our condenser as dirty as that is I'm gonna clean it up before I even cut it all right we got a bunch of that oxidation off of there this one up here is not gonna matter so much because this one is 3 8 on the bottom and half inch on the top we're gonna replace it with one that's 3 8 on both sides. So we'll cut that and we'll leave a little room. Add a little piece of 3 8 and that'll go up inside the half inch. All right, so there's the other one out. She is stopped up, you can't blow through it. Maybe we'll dissect this one later and see what's in it. So we're gonna gauge how much we need there. Again, we're just gonna stick a piece of 3 8 inside that half inch, try to crimp it down a little bit and solder it up. We got plenty of room, we can cut it way up here. We have it dry fitted there. Honestly, I don't think there's any reason to try to crimp that down. I think we can seal that really well. Don't forget to leave the other end open as you trickle nitrogen through anytime you're welding. I'm gonna point the thermal at it while I weld it in place just to see what that looks like. That's pretty cool looking. I can't even see that here in person. Man, I just, I can't, I can't bring myself to not try to straighten those up. I'm gonna take these traders out. Well, we've got no refrigerant in it. We've got torches up here, and that's really shiny, so I think that it's leaking anyway. No need to add any additional solder. I need any more solder. There's plenty of it laying around, apparently. They have some solder back here everywhere. 
All right, uh, still not pretty. <laughs> but when I say, who was the last person that worked on this? At least I'm not gonna feel so bad when somebody comes up here. Put her traders back in. She's gonna go ahead and vacuum it down. We'll see what she says. Now we wait. All right, we'll give it a little bit of time here and make sure it's gonna hold strong. It's been a little bit. I think it's time to clean my gauge. It's kind of going up and down a little bit. That's enough to tell us there's no leak in it. There's no moisture in it. We're gonna lock this side down. Charge it through our liquid side. As that gas is expanding in that line, that line will be getting cold. All right, we have our factory charge weighed in. Uh, it's, now it's about time to start it up here. And if you guys have ever seen one of these, on a unit that is for running your hoses through so you can get the door back in place while it's operating. That looks way better than it did the other day. We're not pulling down into a vacuum. That head pressure is really high. This heat is extremely hot heat. She's gonna have to have the coil clean. So yeah, she's running, she's not happy. I prefer this over trying to use a pump sprayer because as I spray through here, I can see that my cleaner is getting all the way through the coil. So that's what we want. We want that cleaner to get all the way in there, all the way around real thorough, left and right. See the gunk coming out of it. Oh yeah, lots of black stuff, chunky. Alright, we're going to let that coil dry off, see where she lands now. Oh yeah, she's moving a lot more air. That's not, it's still really warm, but it's not hot, hot like it was. She's making lots of water. Well, that's as good as she's gonna get. I am not gonna lie, guys, I am done. All right, we'll see you on the next one.